Hello everyone, my name is Bart. I am one of the TAs this year of uh, A20 in 2023. And I made this video so that I can give you a short introduction into the homework six. Um, homework six is a homework that is being distributed for the first time this year. And uh, some of the learning objectives uh, of this homework this year is to use a state-of-the-art foundation model for segmentation for your own work. Um, foundation models are models that are trained on giant amounts of data. So we're talking about terabytes, probably petabytes in this case, uh, to do something. And in this case, the model has been trained to do 2D segmentation. Um, so in this example of the track, you can give the model a, a square or the star, like a point as input. So in this case, it says, okay, I want to segment the wheel, but I want to leave out the center. And uh, that seems quite successful at that. Or you can give uh, this model which is called the segment anything by by meta ir research um you can just give it an image and it'll find all the different masks in there like it, it says a dog and maybe different subparts of a dog um so really what we thought about is how can we um uh, show you how to use something that comes off the shelf like these huge models and use it in your own work in a, in a meaningful way so we then apply projective geometry to real world problems so we're going to use projective geometry with the output of a foundational uh, segmentation model. And then uh, you'll find that you'll learn to work with varying frames. So there's a camera frame, you know, 3D points as seen from the camera. There's a world frame and then there's the blender frame, which is a slight variation on the camera frame. And um, there's a, some more details about this in the homework. But uh, we found that when working with 2D and 3D vision, uh, researchers and uh, engineers, so pe people that work with um, with computer vision, sometimes get confused with these different frames. And um, you know, when you get confused, just know that this will be useful for um, for future experiences with uh, computer vision, when you will have to distinguish between different frames many, many times. Um, so, one of the key questions is uh, one of the key questions what we would like you to, to think about and, and implement in this homework is how do we use 2D segmentation uh, for 3D segmentation? So we have 2D segmentation masks from Segment Anything. And really what uh, will allow you to do is to take, you know, for, for this image, you'll uh, provide one manually uh, selected box to tell the model, I want to segment this, uh, this coffee mug. And then we want to use uh, only that input to use the, the foundational uh, segmentation model SAM segment anything on all the other views um, and it's not quite clear you know if it, just from the story how you do that right so uh, we provide a lot of structure and uh, basically we uh, you only have to fill in uh, a number of functions so uh, the way we will we will achieve this the way we will get from 2d masks to a 3d segmentation is to run segment anything on a single image from the data set we provide this data set with a number of views then project a mask to 3d points and world coordinates using ground truth depth so we get depth uh, along the z-axis of the camera so how far along is uh, the pixel that you're seeing along the, the z-axis the principal axis of the camera and then for all unseen views you will project all the points and world coordinates from uh, the previous views, so maybe just frame one, for example. Uh, so you had a point cloud in the world frame, you transport it back to the image frame of the next view. Uh, you can use that to generate a new input to segment anything, and then you project a new mask, like a new output of segment anything, you project that back to world coordinates, and that's kind of how you iteratively add to the to the mask, uh, or, or to, I'm sorry, to the 3D point cloud of the, of the mug. And um, using that point cloud, you can uh, generate sort of this bounding box that you see here. That is an input to the model, also called, called a prompt box. Um, and you can generate that using that 3D point cloud by projecting it back into the image frame. Uh, the final step is to filter point cloud using the off-the-shelf uh, filtering approach. So that's a relatively small part of the homework. You just, you're allowed to call uh, an open 3D function. Um, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, please um, send us a message on Piazza. Um, but yeah, we're excited about this new homework because there's some, uh, you know, f some large deep learning models that you're learning to deploy, and then there's uh, some some pretty good uh, projective geometry and, and different camera frames that you'll learn to work with, which, you know, at least in my experience, is, is really important for uh, for computer vision in, in practice. 
So here's an example of how the, uh, this approach worked uh, when we were doing it. So, you know, you get the, you can see the iteration number here. So this is the first iteration, which is uh, really one one view or, or two views, I think. And then uh, iteration 10, 50, and it goes all the way to 100 because we had 100 views, 100 different viewpoints of this scene. Um, then this is the statistical outlier rejection from Open3D. And uh, yeah, the, the image on the right is kind of the, the output that we, we hope to expect from, from you guys. Um, so that was the um, the brief introduction on the, on the homework. I'll quickly give you some insight into how to run this homework. Uh, the easiest way is to press this button, open collab. So I just press this button here, uh, open collab, but you can see that on the, on the GitHub website too. It's loading for a little bit, uh, but then it opens in Google Colab. So here we are. And you can work in here directly. You can save to your Google Drive. So copy to Drive is one of the options. Uh, make sure you save it to Drive. Let me, you know, As far as I know, you have to copy it to Drive and then start working in it for it to be saved to your, uh, to your local things. So uh, what I suggest doing, or I mean, what you have to do is to uh, change runtime type, do it, set it to T4 GPU because we need a GPU for this homework. That's the whole reason we're going to run it in uh, in, Col in uh, Collab. And you see that there's an allocation of, uh, of uh, T4 uh, TPU. So, okay, this is basically the homework. And um, it's important to, to set this par parameter to true. Use Collab if you use Collab. It's, it's set to true by default, but you know just make sure that it's uh, set to true. Uh, and then if that parameter is, uh, is set to true, you uh, you automatically download all the right like the data set, uh, the checkpoint for the model. Um, hopefully, this this is quite automated and uh, even get some visualization of the data. So you know then you just uh, get along and, and do all the different uh, parts of the homework. Uh, so for example here, uh, Q zero point one, which um, the next time you see this homework, we'll, we'll change it so it actually starts at Q1. So I'm sorry for the, for the confusion here, but it's going to start at Q1. And you should also submit it to Gradescope in that way. Uh, but here you're asked to compute the, the K matrix based on some of the parameters in this data set class. Um, so you're going to go along, along, along. Um, your, your outputs will be printed, and then eventually you get to, the, uh, to your final output, which hopefully um, looks a bit li like ours. The final thing I would like to point out is um, we've also prepared uh, a bit of structure for you to, to run this homework um, if you're using local compute. So um, you'll need a GPU, but for example, on the machine that I'm using right now, if you type the command NVIDIA SMI, you can see that this computer has 12.3 gigabytes of VRAM. Uh, so that's th that I, I found that to be sufficient but barely. So I suggest using, uh, like if you want to run things locally on your own computer, um, I suggest uh, that you have at least a CUDA enabled GPU, so an NVIDIA GPU with at least 12 gigabytes of, of VRAM. Uh, if not, then uh, you just set this to false, easy, and run this, uh, this script. So how I do that is just, you know, I'm in Linux, but this should work on some other platforms too, uh, at least on Mac, I think. So you just run this, Going to install everything, uh, all the, all the you know, different uh, tools you would need. Uh, it might be that you still that it's still missing some pieces. Uh, please let me know. I'll, I'll add it. Uh, but it's, it's essentially it's going to start and download the. Uh, just taking a while because my internet connection is slow. But it's going to go and download the checkpoint of the of the foundational model, and uh, download the data set. So really, that's it. Um, Thank you for uh, for watching this video, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll hold two office hours this week, two office hours next week. Um, yeah, I hope you're excited as I am for this homework, and um, yeah, I'm happy to, to help you with any issues that, that might come up. Yeah, thanks. Bye bye.